Vanden Kerr may seem like just an ordinary rusty sedan, but he's got depth. You gotta look into his soul behind what meets the eye. Alright guys, so of course today we have Van Denker, the last card to review from 2019 Singles Case M, which I unboxed just a couple days ago. So if you missed it, check out the video in the description below or the card suggestion pop-up in the top right hand corner. And unfortunately out of all the polls, Vanden never won, so he is last, but he's definitely not least. Like I said, there's a lot to talk about for Vanden. I'm super excited to show off those prototypes that I have there in the background for Vanden. And let's just get into the review here of his packaging. So he's got some nice artwork there. I like it. The desert blur in the background. He is in the Cotter Pin series. I love the pink stripe and of course the simplified sign. He's looking good. On the back here you can see of course the scene from the movie, the Cotter Pin Bar and Grill. Friends of the late, great, fabulous Hudson Hornet gather at the Cotter Pin. Los Amigos del Fabuloso Hudson Hornet say reunion and the Cotter Pin. And we can see four other releases that have already been out. Jenny Tolan, who I will review in the next week or so. Bill Revs, who I reviewed like a month ago. Andrew Vrooman, who I reviewed also like a month ago. And Smokey, who I reviewed like two years ago. So I'll put some of those links in the description below, some in the card suggestions, so you can check them out if you miss those videos. My personal favorite is still probably Andrew, because I love that he's an El Camino, but Vanden will definitely take a run at him. We'll see what happens when I get him out of the package. So here is Vanden out of the package and he looks awesome, at least I think so. Clearly there are some people who don't think so. Based on all those polls on my previous videos, he never got more than like 5 or 10% of the vote and that's pretty bad. I don't understand why. So to those people out there who don't particularly like Vanden, I'm just warning you. There is an army of Vanden Kurs somewhere in the world. The location is unknown, but there's a picture for confirmation if you don't believe me. So if I were you, might want to change your attitude toward big man Vanden over here. I mean, he's coming for you. Just saying. Just putting it out there. But anyways, as for his appearance in Cars 3, obviously at the collar pin. And he was talking to Billy Boy Revs. Just chatting it up over there in the corner. Now he does look a little brighter green. I don't know if it's just the lighting or if Mattel made a little mistake. You also don't quite see the blue portion of him on either side. You just kind of see him from the front like that. And yeah, he definitely looks lighter. So anyways, it's really not a big deal, but his expression is perfect for this because he's obviously looking to his right at Bill Rev. So that's awesome. Now we're gonna pull in the prototypes here. So I got these on eBay like a year or so ago, maybe a little less than that. They may still be on eBay actually if you search up Disney Cars Test Shot, which is the same thing as a prototype. Test Shot being one word, T-E-S-T-S-H-O-T. -E and you might be able to find them available for only like, I don't know, not too much money. And you can make an offer to get the price even lower. So definitely do that if you're interested. So you can definitely tell this is Vanden right by the expression. If I can hold it, you can see he's got that little smile there, which matches this one here. So as we kind of go along, I'll point out a few things, but I do want to focus right now solely on Vanden. Again, I love his expression and the eyes don't even look that grainy. Just maybe in the eyelid there, but Thailand, I don't know, maybe they are improving. Of course, you have the grill and the headlights looking a little weathered, especially this bumper here. You can see some rust on the edge there, which is great. I love the shade of green here. It's kind of like emerald meets forest green. It's got a little metallic tint to it. So I feel like when he was fresh off the factory line, he was pretty shiny. But, you know, over the years, he's let some oxidation get to him around the edges of the hood. A little rust, a little dirt, especially, you know, yeah, on the edges here. You can see that there. It really does blend in. It's a good color, you know, if you're rusty. I would want to be this color because it really doesn't show that much. 
The rims look good. They don't really fill up the whole wheel well. Side view mirrors are pretty big and they do match. Again, you can see that there. They were just red before. You can kind of really see the rust and damage along the you know, door handle side right here and just kind of along the edges here. I like the windows there. They add some detailing. I love how the back portion here is a different color because it really adds a nice contrast to all the green. I don't know if he, I don't know, got dented back here and they ran out of the blue paint. Maybe he just likes this light blue paint, gives him some character. I don't know, but it definitely looks cool. It certainly is not staying away from getting a little rusty though. On the roof is where the most damage is. You can see that scratching and oxidation all kind of mixed together up there. Same kind of thing on the trunk. His license plate is B12-18B. So this could be, again, you know, a birthday for somebody with the initials of BB and then the birthday of December 18th. All the license plates nowadays pretty much are in this style where it has the initials on either end and a birthday. That was an epic fail. Bill Revs does not have a license plate. But yeah, and then the birthday in the middle, like here, this one, SO6-12T. So of course, ST, this is June 12th. I know my months. I do. So yeah, I have no idea who that is. I'd have to really think about, look at some Pixar employees and Google their birthdays. That's interesting. They really should put like who this car was named after, like a Pixar employee, and then put their birthday. But they're not doing that one bit. We have the bumper again back here, a little rusty, and I like that. He's an awesome car. Would make a great background car for like a stop motion. And his base here, you have M10A, so that is the 10th week of 2019 in which he was produced at the A factory. But yeah, great car. He could even fit in with the rusty cars from Cars 1. You know those guys, right? We have Japheth here. I pulled a few out for comparison. Some other sedans. Poor Japheth really needs to let the rust get to him. He needs some rusties. Everybody needs some rusties, let's be honest. There's no person or car that I can think of who wouldn't need or want some rusties. Rusty's just the best solution to all. Cure, it's the cure. Jonathan Wrenchworth's here. Also a little lighter shade of green. Probably the most similar car to him is Michael Sparkburr here, who is all gray, really kind of dirty. And he's got that huge dent right there. He's just a little wider than Vanden, a little taller as well, a little chunkier all around. Definitely a longer back window there. Does have the dent. Vanden is good on dents right now, at least for now. Who else we got here? I also brought out Todd Crash from the Demolition Derby, even though he's a coupe. Similar sizes, at least. So many rusty cars we're getting this year. It's kind of crazy. You know, let's pull in Bill Revs here. We could really have a nice comparison. Look at all these guys. These are like the three rusty brothers here. All awesome cars, though, without a doubt. Hmm. It's weird that Todd Crash's eyes are a part of the body, whereas Bill's and looks like, yeah, Vanden's are separate pieces. Interesting. Interessante. Who else? You go back there. We'll take a look at the prototype right now. So you can see that the grill tooling and the headlights there stay pretty much the same. Since it's just a prototype, he doesn't have any of the rusting on him, but it looks like he's still pretty messed up from all the chips and bouncing around in the factory. The rims looks like they just took them from another car, maybe like a matchbox car, because they have little treads on them, you can see, so those are pretty different. On the back, you can see the taillights, a little spot for the license plate. Very, very nice. And all three of these are the same. They don't really have any differences, just, you know, where they've been chipped. This one's pretty clean, actually. This one's good. But yeah, if you're interested in one of these, they are legit prototypes, by the way. I wouldn't show them if they weren't. You can definitely get one if you're interested. But yeah, let's get those out of the way here. By the way, Brad Windmiller is the same model as Michael Sparkber. 
Actually, my bad. No, he's a little shorter, a little smaller. Oops. Anyways, though, he's also very similar to Van Den Kerr. Probably even more similar than Michael Sparper was. Look at that. Different grills, though. Side view mirrors are different. Windows are very similar. All right, guys. Well, that is pretty much all. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. That puts... You know, that closes the chapter on case M and we will move on back. Actually, we'll move back to case J and then onwards to case P eventually. So now that we have a bunch of these collar pin cards here, let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite. Mine is still Andrew Vrooman and then probably Xanadu bumpers here because they are realistic models in El Camino and the Volkswagen Bug. But all four of them are really unique in all their own ways and very, very cool indeed. So I hope you guys again enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for checking it out. And I'll see you guys in the next couple days for probably a review of Steve Slick LePage and XRS Mud Racing format paint job whatever you want to call it see you guys then bye now